Welcome, dear friends. Today I will tell you a mystical story about love, destiny, and family secrets. Enjoy the story. Kate squeezed Corey's hand as they strolled through the bustling street fair, the scent of funnel cakes and popcorn swirling in the air. Oh, look at that! She pointed at a colorful tent emblazoned with the words, Madam Sarah, fortune teller extraordinaire. Corey chuckled. Don't tell me you believe in that hocus pocus. It's just harmless fun. Wouldn't it be a hoot to have her at our wedding reception? She could entertain the guests. I don't know, Kate. Those carnival types can be shady. Kate batted her lashes. Pretty please, for me? Corey sighed, unable to resist her puppy dog eyes. All right, all right. Clapping with glee, Kate dragged Corey into the incense-filled tent. Perched at a table swathed in silk scarves, sat a striking woman in colorful skirts, gold hoops swinging from her ears. Welcome, my dears. I am Madame Sarah. Care to have your fortunes told? Actually, Kate grinned, we're getting married next week. Any chance we could hire you to read at our reception? Sarah's eyes sparkled. But of course, I will give your guests a night they shall never forget. She winked at Corey. Do not look so doubtful, young man. All will be revealed in due course. A fortune teller? At your wedding? Kate's mother Anna arched an eyebrow as she adjusted Kate's veil. I don't know if that's wise. What if she steals from the guests? Oh, Mom, Sarah's not like that. It'll be such fun. Kate twirled, her dress flaring. Anna softened. Well, it's your special day. I just want it to be perfect. She cupped Kate's face. My baby girl, all grown up. Seems like yesterday you were learning to walk. Don't cry, Mom, you'll ruin your makeup. Kate kissed Anna's cheek. I wish Dad could be here to walk me down the aisle. Pain flickered in Anna's eyes before she managed a smile. He'd be so proud of you, sweetheart. I wish I had cherished our time together more. You and Corey, never take your love for granted. We won't, Kate promised. Is Corey's dad still set to arrive right before the ceremony? Anna nodded. Michael's flying in from Chicago. You know how busy he is with the company. I can't wait to finally meet him. I hope he likes me. Oh, honey, what's not to like? Anna hugged her daughter tight, praying silently that Kate would never know the agony of loss and betrayal that she had endured. Thirty years ago. The organist played a mournful dirge as Anna stared numbly at the mahogany coffin, unable to process the truth. Her beloved husband John, dead at thirty-five, and not even from the cancer that had been slowly eating away at him, but in a fiery car crash with the mystery woman he'd apparently been having an affair with. Even as Anna had nursed him selflessly, he'd been sneaking off for clandestine trysts. Rage and anguish warred within Anna as mourners offered meaningless platitudes. As the crowd parted, she glimpsed a tall, devastatingly handsome stranger lingering in the shadows before he vanished. Probably some secret lover of the mistress, she thought bitterly. Three days later, as Anna robotically sorted through sympathy cards, the phone rang. Mrs. Miller, you don't know me, but my name is Michael Whitaker. I'm the husband of the woman who was with your husband when... An awkward pause. I was hoping we could meet. Curiosity compelled Anna to the seedy diner where Michael waited. He was even more striking up close. Mrs. Miller, my deepest condolences, he began, steel blue eyes filled with sorrow. I wish we were meeting under different circumstances, but I have something for you. Reaching into his briefcase, he pulled out a folder. Apartment papers. It seems my wife and your husband? They had purchased a love nest together. Anna recoiled as if slapped. I can't. I don't want anything to do with their sordid affair. Michael flinched. Neither do I. I've signed my half over to you. What you do with it is your business. He hesitated. For what it's worth, my wife and I. We weren't happy for a long time. But I loved her desperately even if she didn't love me back. He stood abruptly. I'm leaving town. There's nothing for me here anymore. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. As he strode away, Anna stared at his broad back, feeling a confusing jolt of kinship with this man who shared her pain. The country club transformed into an enchanted garden for Kate and Corey's nuptials, white roses and fairy lights everywhere. As the happy couple twirled on the dance floor, Madame Sarah made her grand entrance in swishing skirts, gold bangles jangling. Gather round, my dears, and let Madame Sarah peer into your souls, 
she declared dramatically as guests tittered. Kate beamed, but her smile faltered when she noticed her mother frozen in place, staring in shock at something across the room. Following her gaze, Kate spotted a distinguished silver-haired man who could only be Corey's father Michael, looking equally poleaxed. They appeared to be trying to avoid each other while sneaking covert glances. How odd, she murmured to Corey. Do you think they know each other? I'm sure we would have heard about it, Corey shrugged. When Madame Sarah called for volunteers to have their fortunes told, Kate spotted an opportunity. Mother, you should go. Oh no, I don't think... Anna demurred. Please? For me? Sighing, Anna approached the gypsy. Madame Sarah grasped her palm, tracing the lines. Her eyes snapped up to meet Anna's. You have known great sorrow, yes? You blame another for your pain, but you must let go of resentment. Open your heart again, and you will remarry within the year. As Anna gaped, Sarah turned to a visibly uncomfortable Michael. And you, sir, running from your destiny, you cannot escape yourself. Her voice turned foreboding. The spirits demand truth. Only then will you find peace. An astonished hush fell over the crowd at the cryptic words. Sarah rose. I'm afraid I must take my leave. The aura here is unsettled. Best wishes to the bride and groom. With a swish of her skirts, she breezed out, leaving everyone murmuring. Rattled, Anna fled for the garden. What was Sarah implying? It was absurd. Michael's wife had destroyed Anna's family. Clutching a stone bench, she gulped the cool night air. Quite the theatrical exit, a deep voice remarked behind her. Anna spun to see Michael standing there, offering her a monogrammed handkerchief. With trembling hands, she dabbed her eyes. Yes, well, carnival folk do love their dramatics. He eyed her with concern. Are you all right? Just overwhelmed, she managed. Michael sat beside her, careful to keep a respectful distance. Never expected to find you here, at my son's wedding, to your daughter. Anna barked a humorless laugh. Small world, isn't it? Didn't expect to see the husband of my husband's mistress tonight. He winced. Anna, about what that fortune teller said. Pure nonsense, she cut him off. I've no room for fairy tales. But the question is, should we tell the children? I don't want to cast a pall over their happiness. Agreed, Michael sighed. Best to let the past stay buried. They lapsed into silence, lost in their own chaotic thoughts, as the music drifted from the ballroom. Mom! Michael! We have news! Kate called, pulling Corey over to where their parents sat stiffly. We're pregnant! Corey announced with a huge grin, hands proudly on Kate's still flat stomach. Oh! Anna gasped as Michael's eyes widened. Leaping up, they engulfed the happy couple in hugs, laughing with surprised delight. My baby is having a baby, Anna marveled, eyes bright with tears. Congratulations, son. You'll make a wonderful father, Michael said gruffly, clapping Corey on the back. He turned to Kate. And you, my dear, will be a mother like no other. As the four embraced, Michael's hand accidentally brushed Anna's, sending a jolt of awareness through her that was as unwelcome as it was thrilling. Stepping back, she busied herself straightening Kate's hair ribbon. What a night, so many blessings. Watching the soon-to-be grandparents, Kate couldn't shake the feeling that there was more going on than met the eye. But she simply basked in the family's shared joy, choosing to focus on the promise of the future. Thank you for retrieving my wrap, Anna said as she and Michael strolled along the moonlit path back to the country club. With the revelry winding down, Corey had insisted on driving a tipsy Kate home while Michael offered to help Anna collect her things and see her safely to her car. I confess, I had ulterior motives, Michael admitted. I wanted to discuss, well, us, this unexpected connection between our families. There is no us, Anna said more sharply than intended. Softening, she continued, I appreciate what you're trying to do, Michael, but old wounds are best left alone. He stopped, turning to face her fully. Are they, Anna? Can we really move forward without acknowledging our shared pain? Without airing the truth? Meeting his earnest gaze, Anna wavered. What truth? That your wife and my husband betrayed us both? Shattered our lives without a backward glance? No, Michael shook his head. The truth that we are both survivors. That we share an understanding no one else can fathom. And that maybe, 
Just maybe. Fate has brought us together for a reason. Anna scoffed. You can't possibly believe. That there could be a future for us? Michael cut in boldly. Why not? We're both still young, still healthy, still capable of great love. Unless... Unless what? She whispered. His eyes bored into hers. Unless you're afraid of getting hurt again, of risking your heart on a crazy chance. He reached out to stroke her cheek. But some chances are worth taking, Anna. Her pulse raced at his touch. This was madness, utter madness. A week later, the four gathered at a cozy brunch spot downtown to break bread and family bombshells. As coffee was poured, Anna and Michael shared a loaded glance. Kids, Michael began, there's something you should know about the connection between our families. You see, many years ago, my wife had an affair with Anna's husband. Kate choked on her scone as Corey's eyes bugged out. What? They passed away together, Anna said evenly. In the accident. I had no idea until your father approached me at the funeral. Jesus, Corey breathed. This is... I don't even know what to say. Are you... okay? Kate asked her mother anxiously. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Anna patted her hand. I've made my peace with it, sweetheart. But we felt you deserved the full truth. No family secrets. Did you two? Were you ever, uh, involved? Corey questioned awkwardly. No, Michael said firmly. I left town after everything. Your mother and I lost touch until the wedding. An uncomfortable silence descended as forks clinked against plates. Finally, Kate cleared her throat. Well, this is a lot to process, but it doesn't change anything, not really. Corey and I love each other. We're building our own family. The sins of the past, they're not ours to bear. Visibly relieved, Anna and Michael sat back. No, they aren't, Michael agreed. All we can do is move forward. Speaking of, I actually need to head back to Chicago soon. So soon? Anna blurted before she could catch herself. I mean, I thought you'd stay at least until the grandchild is born. A shadow crossed Michael's face. I wish I could, but I have business to attend to, tying up loose ends, as it were. Anna's heart sank as an uncomfortable suspicion began to niggle. Was there another woman in Chicago? Had she read too much into their shared moments? Across the table, Kate shot Corey a significant glance. Clearing his throat, he said, Actually, Dad, Kate and I were hoping you could stick around a bit longer. Help us set up the nursery. Maybe go over our business plan for the cafe. As Michael hesitated, the plea clear in Kate's eyes, Anna held her breath. When he broke into a slow smile, she exhaled shakily. Well, when you put it like that, I suppose Chicago can wait a few more days. Under the table, his hand found Anna's, intertwining their fingers. And in that perfect, shining moment, she finally allowed herself to hope. Last call for flight 3,418 to Chicago, now boarding at gate 12. Anna stood numbly at the airport terminal, watching Michael hoist his carry-on. This was it, the inevitable goodbye. Over the past few days, as Kate and Corey beamed with baby bliss, she and Michael had settled into a bittersweet limbo, too many feelings left unspoken, too much history remaining unresolved. Now she struggled for words that refused to come. Anna! Michael turned to her, handsome face etched with regret. I wish we had more time. There's still so much to say. It's all right, she lied, blinking back tears. You have a life in Chicago, I understand. He searched her face. What if, what if I didn't go? If I stayed here with you? Would you want that? Her traitorous heart leapt, but she shook her head. Michael, you don't have to. Look me in the eye and tell me you want me to leave. That there's nothing between us worth exploring. He tipped her chin up, voice rough with emotion. Can you do that? Anna stared at his beloved features the only man who understood her deepest wounds. I... I can't, she whispered. With a groan, Michael dropped his bag and yanked her against him, hands fisting in her hair. Then give me a reason to stay, damn it, he commanded. Ask me, Anna. Throwing caution to the wind, she wrapped her arms around his neck. Stay, she breathed. Please stay. I... I love you, Michael. I think a part of me always has... His kiss seared her to her very soul, branding her as his. 
When they finally broke apart, breathing raggedly, he pressed his forehead to hers. I'll call the airline, get a flight back to pack my things, and then, then I'll come home. To you. Joy unlike any she had ever known burst through Anna. For so long she'd merely existed, numb to the world. Now in Michael's arms, she was reborn. Two broken halves finally made whole, their future stretched before them, golden and gleaming with promise. And for the first time in forever, Anna couldn't wait to greet tomorrow. Seven months later. Oh, she's absolutely perfect, Anna cooed, cradling her tiny granddaughter. Beside her, Michael beamed with grandfatherly pride. Looks like she has granddad's eyes, Kate winked at her father-in-law. You just keep this little angel happy and healthy, Michael Mock threatened. No broken hearts until she's at least thirty. Yes, sir, Corey saluted with a grin, arm around his wife. When are you flying back? Kate asked as she transferred the baby to Michael's eager arms. Actually, Anna exchanged a glowing look with her new husband. We were thinking of staying in town an extra week. Help out with the cafe and this little nugget. That would be amazing, Kate exhaled. I had no idea juggling a newborn and a new business would be so hectic. We're here for you, sweetheart, always, Anna promised. Later, as Kate and Corey waved from the porch of their craftsman home, Anna laced her fingers through Michael's, wedding bands glinting in the sun. Can you believe how far we've come? She marveled. Not even a year ago, we were two lost souls drowning in grief. And now, now we have everything, Michael finished, kissing her temple. A second chance, a new beginning, and it's all because of you, my love. Anna nestled into his strong embrace, heart near to bursting. After her husband's death, she had erected walls around her wounded spirit, determined never to be so vulnerable again. But Michael, steadfast, compassionate Michael, had torn those ramparts down brick by brick until she emerged blinking into the sunlight of his love. Together, they had built something real and enduring from the ashes of their past. These days, Anna split her time between Michael's sprawling estate in the Chicago suburbs and her cozy bungalow back in town, overseeing the launch of her home goods boutique. Turns out, her eye for interior design and Michael's business acumen made them quite the power couple. Plans were already underway to open a second location. Just think, this time next month, we'll be back for Thanksgiving, Anna mused. Our first big family holiday. I want everything to be perfect. It already is. As long as I have you by my side, every day feels like a gift. Michael's voice was husky with emotion. Rising on tiptoes, Anna brushed her lips against his. What a difference a year makes. Who could have imagined that a gypsy's prophecy would set in motion such earth-shattering events? That the key to Anna's happiness lay in the most unlikely of places? But then again, that was the magic of love, wasn't it? To heal, to transform, to make the impossible suddenly inevitable. Hand in hand, Anna and Michael strolled into the golden autumn afternoon, secure in the knowledge that whatever life threw their way, they would face it together. Forever.